For, for our Dean, uh, Giannis Gertzis. Um, before I introduce Giannis, uh, I want to say a few words about what we've done um, in the EFC this year. Uh, one of the things we did was move our elections and surveys online uh, while completing one election for represent representatives and three surveys on hot topics, uh, the status of part-time faculty, the usability of USC's new online administrative systems, and the adequacy of current classroom facilities. So I'd like to thank all of you who submitted responses to these surveys. Um, we're gonna need to continue to work on this in next year's EFC, but hopefully this will provide very excellent feedback uh, to help guide what's done next year. This year we also experimented with more direct outreach to the faculty with the open forums that were held in the fall and the spring. These did lead to useful conversations among the faculty there, but the attendance by the general faculty was um, so low, in fact, embarrassingly low, that we're gonna have to chalk it up as a, a noble but failed experiment. Um, back on the positive side, we did manage to instigate some small improvements in the physical facilities this year, an increase in outdoor non-smoking areas, um, a reduction in the use of parking structure A by outside contractors, and a commitment from the Department of Transportation to sell fewer permits for PSA next year. Um, there is more work that needs to be done uh, with respect to parking in that corner, but that will going to have to wait for next year. Um, this year we're also involved in discussions in the school and at the university levels of a number of important issues, like how to help departments uh, control their own destinies in planning and executing for excellence shifting departments and programs to a four-unit course system, teaching faculty appointments and promotions in non-academic uh, programs, equity in faculty teaching loads, diversity in campus climate and part-time faculty. The last two were actually key initiatives from the Academic Senate this year. We also began exploring the topic of sabbaticals for research and teaching faculty. These are technically allowed, but there's no funding allocated to them. Uh, so continued work needs to occur on that next year. Um, we also continued our work on trying to enable more effective technology transfer here at USC, a task again that needs to continue next year. Um, so we've had some overall progress been made this year, but much is left for next year's EFC to pick up if they so desire. Uh, in closing, I'd like to thank um, in particular Todd Brunn, our vice chair, uh, Alicia Prata, our secretary, Richard Vauter, our webmaster, and all of our various committee chairs. I'd also like to thank the Dean's Office for their collaboration and contributions this year. So at that point, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our Dean, Dean Giannis Jortzis, uh, who will take things from here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. And uh, good afternoon, or good, uh, yeah, good, good afternoon to everyone here. I hope you're enjoying your lunch. And uh, we got to keep, keep going because <coughs> we have a long ceremony, uh, as well my speech, which will last for the next three hours. And so, <coughs> so I want to make sure that uh, we fit everyone here together. It's a great pleasure to see everyone here again. Uh, it's April. April is a ceremony uh, and awards month for the university, actually May as well. So we're here to gather to celebrate uh, the accomplishments of the school and the faculty and staff. These are your accomplishments. And I'd like to also summarize some important school-wide um, accomplishments in the year that pass. Before I proceed, I'd like to introduce two important guests that we have with us here at, uh, uh, with us today. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Ming She, USC trustee. Ming, can you please stand up? And the namesake. Namesake of our Mingsei Department of Electrical Engineering, which is celebrating 
It's 10th naming anniversary this year, and we're going to have a big gala event in October when the actual uh, uh, day, uh, anniversary will happen. I mean, welcome, and uh, thank you for joining us. Remember, there is no free lunch, however. <coughs> Um, I also like to acknowledge uh, my colleague, uh, Danny Bird, the Dean of the Dornsife College of Letters, Arts and Science, who honors us with her presence. Danny. <laughs> she is an impromptu guest, and many of you will find out later why. Spring is a season of renewal, hope, and optimism, even for Lakers fans. Uh, and or <clears throat> those of you a smaller subset of people that in the know of Tottenham Hotspur fans from the English Premier League we tied last yesterday uh, we should have won anyway that's <laughs> only a few three or four people know here what I'm talking about <laughs> nonetheless <laughs> maybe over there um, for us is also the culmination of the academic year uh, we have graduates who will leave the place they have called home for a long time and embark on their exciting life journey. Some will become entrepreneurs, some will become great researchers, some will work for established companies. All will be armed with the knowledge, skills, and wisdom they acquire here at USC. We are always proud that the knowledge they acquire from here will be with them, that we have shaped their lives hopefully for the better. And as historian and memorist Henry Adams once observed, a teacher affects eternity. So I think that's something to always keep in mind. Spring is also the time to reflect on the past academic year and to celebrate our successes. Each and every one of you has played a key role in advancing our mission. Now, in case you have been uh, under a rock and have not been paying attention in the last few years, let me summarize our four following four pillars, which is our mission. The first pillar is talent. How do we attract top talent, whether students, faculty, or staff, and create the environment for them to flourish? Actually, today, this week and uh, this month has been a strong month for attracting talent with respect to our freshman class for next fall. Louise and her team are doing a great job in making sure that the talented students that we have admitted will also enroll in engineering. It's also the time to recruit new faculty. And many of you know the efforts that we have uh, undertaken in that. The second pillar is value. We have to continuously add value in what we do. We live in a exciting times for science and engineering. The world is being disrupted every day. And we want to make sure that we keep adding value to our programs, our infrastructure, our curriculum, to make sure that we actually lead this transformation, this disruption that is happening constantly in our lives. The third is thought leadership. Techni engineering schools are advanced thought leaderships in solving big problems, world challenges, enriching life, and um, uh, helping to, to, to elevate the world standard of living, and also to further enable science. This is the thought leadership that we provide. And fourth is impact. We want to make sure we are the catalyst for the innovation, innovations that will fuel the economic growth of Los Angeles, Southern California, and the world. Talent value, thought leadership, impact. These are the four pillars that we are here uh, um, uh, promoting here at the USC Viterbi. We have come a long way since the founding of the school. We even have come a long way since uh, its naming of the school 12 years ago. And I think many new exciting things are happening uh, for the next few years. You can read all about our history in the Viterbi bestseller, A Remarkable Trajectory. An account of the school's history by Professor Emeritus George Becky. If you have not gotten your copy, do get it. I'm eagerly waiting for it to appear in airport bookstores any day now. Right. We live in an unprecedented era for engineering and technology. This is the engineering plus era. That is a term that we have used here for the last seven, eight years. It was coined here at USC Viterbi, don't forget that. It's an era that reshaping the world. And the exponential pace of technological discovery give us in engineering a very advantageous position. It's up to every single one of us to leverage and provide the immense benefits that will come out of it. And we also have a corresponding responsibility 
to not let such opportunities be wasted. We can realistically now hope to solve problems that up to now are considered unsolvable. For example, the ones that are articulated in the National Academy Grand Challenges. So let me give you some examples of the Viterbi leadership nationally and globally, which are cuts across all four pillars. As you know, we created the Grand Challenges National, uh, National Academy of Engineering Grand Challenges Scholars Program. This is a program specifically tailored for undergraduate students. This program was created together with Duke University and Olin College in 2009. And we have led the nation in this. This program is now being pursued by more than 120 schools of engineering in the country. And it is spreading globally. We should be proud of that. It consists of five components. Research, remember this is for undergraduates, inter interdisciplinary curriculum, entrepreneurship, global context, and service learning. Research, interdisciplinarity, entrepreneurship, global context, and service learning. I strongly believe because of the many out of the classroom activities that the Grand Challenges Scholars Program entails, it will be actually a blueprint of future education for any discipline in bricks and mortar universities. I believe this is where bricks and mortar universities education is headed to. I'm also pleased and proud to tell you that the Grand Challenges Program has inspired other non-engineering schools to adopt similar agendas. For example, our own School of Social Work, led by Dean Marilyn Flynn, Flynn, who has learned of this movement in engineering four years ago, and has led a national effort in the, in the schools of social work to create grand challenges for social work. And these grand challenges were articulated early in January. Um, and there are consists of 12 of them. One among them is ending homelessness. In fact, this has been adopted by USC. And tomorrow, I think, at this very uh, uh, room here, there will be a symposium a, 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 a on ending homelessness that the university is putting uh, across the board, across the entire, the entire uh, university. In engineering, um, we will have one uh, panel uh, discussion on how technology can help in this area. This leadership is important, but it's also necessary because when I, what I call engineering plus, I call engineering plus X, if you like, symbol, symbolizes the convergence of everything where X can be any discipline. Let's think more deeply about what this convergence means and how um, uh, it can help us uh, uh, take the leadership role that we need to take. We can identify three pa pathways. One is how engineering enables X, where X can be anything. To use modern uh, nomenclature, I call it E2X, how engineering uh, empowers X. Engineering essentially helps make X smarter. It helps open unprecedented new opportunities, creates new efficiencies, open new dimensions, and helps acquire new properties for X. Digital media and communications is a good example of such E2X. Medicine is another great example of E2X. Often, E2X is the digitization of everything. With IoT, the Internet of Things, fast rising in the horizon as a new disruption. Now, USC has the important distinction that is likely the only place in the world with so many X's present on campus. Indeed, if you look around you, you have cinema, architecture, fine arts, music, law, pub policy, business, and the like. We must take advantage of this plethora of opportunities that exist for us in order to augment and increase this E2X enabling power. And we have. We have reached out across the campus to create, for example, HTE at USC, Health Technology and Engineering, with the School of Medicine. More can be done there. USC Games, a partnership with cinema. The Viterbi Annenberg partnership that was um, announced uh, this year. And it is uh, part of the informatics initiative in the school. And USC Michelson, where X is biology and chemistry. And we see Michelson with, uh, is the, uh, one of the uh, most recent ones, and I should say also one of the most expensive. Uh, you can ask Linda about that. Well, 
also working very fast to create yet another uh, uh, application in this or, or empowering this area with IoT at USC. In terms of things at USC, it's an effort that Bhaskar Krishnamachari at the EE is actually putting together. The second pathway of this convergence is X to E on the other side. How does X can impact engineering? This happens on occasion and in a process which I call X mimetic processes, most likely in biomimetic processes, where we understand how nature works and try to perhaps take examples from that and apply them to engineering and technology. Biometric processes are most, commons, most common, and in many ways, they represent nature's optimization. Nature had millions of years in evolution to optimize certain things, and therefore, in a way, what these biomimetic processes represent is a natural optimization that has already happened. In theory, if we had a very powerful computer, perhaps could have come to the same answer. We don't know that. But certainly, this is something that is, 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 is the ex-mimetic approach to engineering. I do believe, however, that E to X paths are more frequent than X to E paths. And indeed, E, engineering and technology, has the advantage of exponential growth. Do not forget that. We live in exponential times where things happen extremely fast and will be happening even faster in the future. While X, in most cases, does not and remains uh, sort of stationary to some degree. Finally, I should mention that interesting questions arise when X is a discipline that relates to emotions, character, um, uh, legal or ethical considerations. So the question is, how can this uh, X to E pathway transfer emotions or legal consideration or ethical considerations to inanimate objects? And I think that is a fundamental, very interesting question. Is it possible that it will ever happen? I know that very strong AI people believe that this is indeed the case. I think the, the, uh, the, the jury is out. I think there's many scientists and engineers who are concerned about these possibilities. And I think this is a very uh, apt area for us to, to be present and actually also educate our students about that. That's the reason that we started a program here at USC uh, in engineering and the School of Policy on decision making. It's a program we call Decide. And the question is, how do we make decisions? And potentially, if we have to have machines make decisions, how these decisions are to be made? And how to make sure that they obey ethical and legal considerations? I think that's a, an, an increasingly important area that we have to pay more and more attention to, in addition to the things that we do. Finally, there's a third pathway in which X and E uh, commingle and they live together. For example, socio-technical systems are that, in which the two cannot be separated from one another. Technology startups, technology and engineering management, uh, enterprises, these are places where these two commingle in a, very, uh, in, a very, uh, in a way that you cannot actually take them apart. And so this is an area where we have led in the past and we must continue to lead in research and in our curriculum and by constantly revising our offerings. With engineering and technology penetrating even more deeply in our times, it is imperative that we change the conversation regarding who, what we do, who we are, and what we look or sound like. Uh, this is another area where we have led nationally. I'm very proud to tell you that the last couple of years we have led a national effort to change the conversation by inspiring more than 160 US engineering deans to a pledge to take specific steps to implement such a change about engineering and increasing diversity in engineering. This effort is ongoing and growing. And as I cite benefit of this leadership, I got to have a private meeting with the President of the United States for about eight seconds, which was great. <laughs> I am proud to tell you that 35% of our undergraduates are women, nearly double the national average of 18%. CS, a stereotypically underrepresented field in women, has 29% uh, of the, its undergraduate population being females. So we're very proud of that. I'm also proud to report that according to US News, USC Viterbi has more female graduate students than any other school in the country. That's another big uh, achievement. 
Last year, we joined forces with the National Academy of Engineering and Liz Lotov, the MacGyver creator, to help create the next great engineering TV series. We are in Hollywood, Engineering Plus Hollywood. Except that this time, the engineering superhero, the next MacGyver, would be a woman. This is another area we have led the nation. We hear that some of the scripts, written in collaboration with next MacGyver partners Anthony Zwicker of the CSI franchise, and Star Trek and Scorpion producer Roberto Orsi, are being shopped around Hollywood studios right now. Potentially, hopefully, they will become uh, uh, adopted and perhaps uh, have a, a pilot series, and hopefully lead to a real series. Uh, which, if it happens, I hope it will be filmed right here on campus at USC. Some additional con distinctions to consider. USC's valedictorian this year is Suleika Ramaya, a BMA senior. Suleika will be yet another valedictorian, woman valedictorian from USC Viterbi. We're very proud of Suleika. Stacey Finley, who I happen to see here, and Nora Ayanian won the two NSF career awards that we won this year at USC both women faculty. This month, Miriam Sanetsi landed a multidisciplinary university research initiative, EMURI, to lead an interdisciplinary team on brain-machine interface. In my, uh, uh, it, to, to the best of my knowledge, it is the first time that such an award has been given to a junior, non-tenured yet faculty member. That shows the, the, the quality and the talent of a person like Miriam. Maya Matarik, one of ours at the dean's office, was named as one of the top five most innovative women professors alive today. Maya, what kind of a title is this? <laughs> Maya will also join next month a literally who is who panel organized by the Wall Street Journal on technology involving the likes of Sheryl Sandberg and uh, uh, Jensen uh, Huang of uh, NVIDIA and others. So, She's hobnobbing at a much higher level than I am. And I think we're going to have a big announcement coming next uh, couple of days from now on another big uh, research institute at USC led by one of our very talented uh, uh, women faculty. I cannot say anything because it's embargoed until Thursday, but uh, wait and, and keep an eye for that. We're also changing the conversation about USC entrepreneurship. With technology at the core of practically every innovation, we have taken a leadership role to grow an unparalleled innovation ecosystem in Southern California. We have a, an important advantage. The two big research powerhouses, ISI and ICT, are in the traditional, in, in, in what is known as uh, Silicon Beach. And we're committed to drive technology innovation in Southern California, and in the process, transform Silicon Beach into it's Silicon Beach, with SC spelled Silicon Beach. Keep that in mind. This is our moniker from now on for technology innovation in South California, it's Silicon Beach. This year, we launched the Mint Family Engineering Social Entrepreneurship Challenge that focuses on solving societal issues through sustainable business practices. And I will be remiss if I don't recognize from this forum, from this podium here, Andrea Belts who is the NSF i core node director and an emerging national leader in innovation and entrepreneurship for universities, who will be the first vice dean for technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship in the school's history, and I believe in any engineering school in the nation, the establishment of an office like this to help move innovation and entrepreneurship out of the, of the research labs to, to, the, to the marketplace. And Andrea Belts will play an important role there. So let's summarize talent, value, thought leadership, and impact. These are the drivers for our school, and you all help us reach this destination with your talent, with your dedication, and your resourcefulness. So thank you very much for all your work. Now I'd like to proceed with the various awards that we have in the program. Before doing this, I want to highlight some significant individual faculty accomplishments that will not be provided by the awards. And you know that those of you who follow me on Twitter, at Dean Yortzos, uh, at Dean Yortzos, one word, um, you would have already known for most of these accomplishments already because I tweet about them. And it's not late to join, to join me, it's, uh, it's free.
I would like to recognize an, a number of, of awards, uh, a faculty uh, distinctions. Mark Humayun received the National Medal of Technology and Innovation for developing, of course, the device that helps people with a certain type of blindness see. How much higher recognition can one get? Andrew Viterbi won the 2016 Charles Stark Draper Prize of the National Academy of Engineering, which was the equivalent of a Nobel Prize for Engineers. Saul Golom received the Franklin's Institute 2016 Benjamin Franklin Medal in Electrical Engineering last week in Philadelphia. Alan Wilder, who is here with us, was elected to the National Academy of Engineering, the highest honor in the engineering profession. Alan is the 11th USC Viterbi faculty elected to the NAA since 2007. We're very proud of that. He was also among only 15 members appointed by the US Department of Defense as National Security Science and Engineering Faculty Fellow. Congratulations, uh, Alan. And in a fantastic year for Alan, he also received a Phi Kappa Phi USC Faculty Award. Three of our faculty were elected to the National Academy of Inventors, Scott Fraser, Dan Dapkus, and Andy Molish. Ted Berger received the Pioneer Award in Medicine given by the Society for Brain Mapping and Therapeutics. He will also receive the Australian Society for Medical Research Medal. Shan Hua Tang received for the second time the Gödel Prize of the American Mathematical Society. This is an amazing feat. Uh, either they don't have enough uh, nominations, or uh, Shan Hua is really talented. And I'm going with the, same, the second part here. Nats Mescari received the Ernest Amory Godman, Godman Award Lectureship from the Joint Commission's Physician Leadership Forum. Uh, he was also elected or appointed to the uh, Joint Commissioners for uh, the, the an accreditation organization that accredits hospitals for safety. And so that's an amazing uh, recognition for uh, Nats' work in this area. Barocos Nevis was inducted in the European Union Academy of Sciences also won first place in the NASA in situ material challenge. Kostas Sinolakis was inducted in the Academy of Athens, becoming in true dramatic Greek style an immortal. <laughs> That's how they call them, immortals. So, what can I say? John Slaughter received the Provost Mentoring Award. Jay Kuo received the 2016 IEEE Circuits and Systems Society John Choma Education Award, named after own, our own late John Choma, who was a faculty here in Dabolim. He also received the USC Associates Teaching Award. Petros Ioannou, who is here, insto was installed as the inaugural holder of the Bal Balakrishna Chair, and also received the 2016 IEEE Transportation Technologies Award. Prem Natarajan was installed as the inaugural Keston Executive Director of ISI. Milin Tambe won the Innovative Application of AI Award. Suvrajit Sen and Julie Heigl won the Informs Computing Society Award. Ubli Mitra is a recipient of a Fulbright U.S. Scholar Grant. She also is, will receive a Distinguished Visiting Fellowship 2016 from the UK Royal Academy of Engineering. Jim Moore won the 2016 WTS Los Angeles Secretary Ray LaHood Award. Salman Avestimer and Hao Li received OQA um, uh, Foundation Research Grants. Uh, Nino Medvidovic uh, received the recognition of distinguished scientists by AACM. Elis Meng and Nino Medvidovic were named IEEE Fellows. Scott Fraser and Christian Ayak were named American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineering Fellows. Stacy Finley won the Career Award. Nora Yanian won a Career Award. Rehan Kepadia received an AFOSR Young Investigator Award. John Gunnar Carlson received the AFOSR also Young Investigator Award. Fred Amizande won the Regional Formation Evaluation Award of the Society of Petroleum Engineers. A number of our faculty won Best Paper Awards. I will mention them. Ashutosh Nagyar and Ketan Savla. Ketan is here. David Traum, Ron Arstein, Paul De Bevec, Kaliroy Georgila, Anton Lusky, and Bill Swartout receive a Best Paper Award on the International Conference on Interactive Digital Storytelling, as well as Best Paper Award from the 16th Annual SIG Dial Conference. Nitin Kale received the 2016 Award from the SAP University Alliances. Eric Johnson, received the 2016 University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Aerospace Distinguished Alumnus Award. 
Murali Anabaram was inducted into the ACM uh, Sikh Micro Hall of Fame, and Dan Erwin was named an Associate Fellow of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. What a list of awards. Congratulations to all of you. So that was my speech. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Linda Rock, the Vice Dean of Administration, who will start the individual awards presentation with the staff awards. Thank you, Giannis, and thanks, everyone. Good afternoon. Ah, OK, I shouldn't have touched it, clearly. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll take a step back and just not touch it again. All right, before I announce, okay, I printed this really large and I still need my glasses, so. Before I announce the awards, I do want to thank all of you who wrote uh, nomination letters and emails. I have to say that this time of year, reading all of those uh, letters and emails is one of the highlights of the year for me. It's rare that I get to read so many positive things about the staff in one big blast, and so it's lovely. I also want to thank the members of the committee, the faculty and staff members who drop everything at a moment's notice and help with the process and making the decisions, so I appreciate their help as well. Since it all starts with a great staff, I want to salute the many extraordinary staff members across our school. I think the Viterbi School is recognized throughout the university for having one of the best staff groups. And though just three will receive awards today, I want all of you to know how much your work is appreciated, and we probably should be saying this a lot more often to all of you, so thank you all very much. The early career... The Early Career Award for staff is given to a staff member who's been with the Viterbi School between one and three years and whose performance is well above what we typically expect from someone new to their position. We had five terrific nominees in this category this year. This year, the Staff Early Career Award goes to... Should I wait five seconds? <laughs> Andy Chen. <laughs> <laughs> Andy joined us just under three years ago and quickly became an indispensable member of his department. Andy manages a large workload and yet is highly responsive to those he serves. His many, many faculty nominators from all across of his department wrote that he routinely goes above and beyond his job description to assist students and faculty providing high quality service and proactive solutions to challenges. Andy is caring and patient with students and focuses on constant improvement of undergraduate and graduate student services and programs. Several nominators mentioned that Andy established or helped establish several student organizations, which is a first in Mark, including the new MFD Masters Association that encourages students to network with their colleagues, alumni, and faculty, and that he's largely responsible for keeping the group active and ensuring that it has a full social calendar. Mm -hmm. In all the support letters, it came through loud and clear that Andy is an outstanding employee who in just a few years has had an incredibly positive impact on the students, the faculty and MFD, and in turn, the Viterbi School. So everyone, please join me in congratulating Andy on his early career award. Are we doing pictures? Our next award is the Award for Excellence. This award recognizes performance that's extraordinary and routinely rises above and beyond our expectations. We received five nominations in this category also this year, and while all of them were outstanding employees, only one can be selected. So this year, the Staff Award for Excellence goes to, and I'll wait, we need a little bit snared. Araceli Dorado, one of our payroll personnel coordinators in the Viterbi 
HR Payroll Office. Come on up, Vericelli. <laughs> so now it's your turn to get embarrassed. <laughs> Araceli's been with the Viterbi School for almost 16 years in a staff position, and even longer if we add up her time as a student worker in the Viterbi Dean's Office. Upon graduation from USC in May 2000, Araceli joined the Dean's Office as an office assistant, and in February 2001, she accepted a position in the Viterbi Payroll Office. In the 15 years since she joined the payroll team, the school's grown immensely, and the payroll workload grew right along with it in volume and complexity. For many years, when the office had just a few payroll staff, Araceli was primarily responsible for faculty and staff monthly payroll, and she became our resident expert in complex faculty payroll transactions, which are incredibly time consuming. <laughs> Over time, Araceli's role evolved, and as the school added payroll staff to meet the growing workload, and for a few years, she was the lead payroll team member, onboarding, training, mentoring her colleagues, while still analyzing and processing a large volume of work herself. Several years ago, with the implementation of Workday, the Viterbi payroll group restructured to meet the needs of the new system, and each payroll staff member was assigned a group of departments to manage. So Araceli now manages all aspects of faculty, staff, and student payroll processing and analysis for computer science and astronautics. As the longest serving member of our payroll unit, Araceli continues to be a resource for her colleagues, especially on everything historical, <laughs> anything that happened a while ago. Having led this unit many years ago and being the fortunate person to have hired Araceli as a payroll processor, I know firsthand that she manages a huge workload accurately and on time with patience and grace. And as one of her nominators from computer science uh, more eloquently wrote than I could, Araceli should be a finalist for this award every single year. She's a consummate professional, incredibly knowledgeable, remarkably responsive, thorough and detailed in her explanations, and way more patient and kind than many of us should reasonably expect with somebody with her tremendous workload. <laughs> so please, everyone, join me in congratulating Araceli on her award. with her dad. Uh, Araceli's father is also one of our employees. Araceli's father works in our machine shop and he is one of our machinists and so and he's also I think celebrating 30 or 35 years Roman? 30. 30. So we both have accomplishments. So let's get one more. <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, the other, the other good oh, part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I am going to turn this over to Vice Dean for Research, Maya Mataraj, and she will announce the uh, winners of the research awards. And so thank you very much. Hi, everyone. That was touching. Now we're going to move to the humor section of the lunch. <laughs> Although Giannis was very funny as well. He's always very funny. I have to be funnier, so please. <laughs> then later we will have like a competition of applause. No. Um, okay, so we're gonna do this the way we always do it because you know I can't think of more than two good ideas. So I'm not gonna tell you who the person is until the end, but I'm going to talk about them and then you're gonna guess because these people are amazing and you've heard about them and, and you should guess. But there's no quiz. So there are three awards, and we have always an intrepid committee of past winners to decide who should win the awards. And it's always very hard, and the people who won today should be ready to serve next year, um, to serve. But we're not, it's secret who the committee members are. And then we just get a list, and we give the awards. That's the fun part. So I'm not going to tell you which award. You get to figure out also which award. There are three. So Junior Research Award, Senior Research Award, and Youth Inspired Award. But I'm not going to do them in that order, because that would be too obvious, right? Yes, come on, come on, some enthusiasm, okay. Okay, here we go. This nominee could be receiving two of the three awards, but not the third, because the third one they're not eligible for. So start thinking. 
This nominee is an embodiment of interdisciplinarity with research and accordingly appointments, not only in Viterbi, but also in psychology, pediatrics, neuroscience, and linguistics. Beyond that, this faculty member has collaborated with colleagues in theater, communications, social work. There's more, but I have to stop somewhere. The resulting research of this nominee, or rather winner, has trained 37 PhD students, 12 postdocs, and numerous undergrads, has been supported very enthusiastically by NIH, NSF, DARPA, US Army and Navy, has resulted in 17 patents and over 500 publications. Um, and naturally, there have been other awards, but none like the one today, of course. Um, including the NSF career, Akaba Foundation, uh, being a fellow of the ASA, QEEE, and AAAS, and an uncountable number of best paper awards. I mean, seriously, there's a best paper award from this person's lab monthly. I am pretty green with envy on that one. Um, so, this nominee's research has made fundamental and truly useful contributions to speech science, speech and spoken language processing, and human-centered spoken language systems, and has produced the entirely new field of behavior signal processing. And its uses range from child speech therapy, assessment of obesity, autism, psychotherapy, literacy, and even, I'm happy to add, marriage counseling. I have not partaken of that one. Um, <laughs> this could be easily enough for two awards, but we have to pick one. So I'm really proud to present the Youth Inspired Research Award to Sri Narayanan. Maybe you can have an award. Nope. They're mixed. There's also a check. There's a check, yes. I keep the check. <laughs> Wait, the check, the check. The check is mine. <laughs> this is the check. <laughs> okay, two more. So, this nominee could not be receiving all three awards yet, but in a while. Okay? Thinking, thinking, okay? So, this nominee has an unusual combination of training that brings together engineering and architecture in a way that results in rare, yet cutting edge expertise in a rapidly growing field that brings together sensing, information technology, and environments to improve our human experience as well as to conserve energy. Uh, the fact that you can already probably guess who this is speaks much about this person's impact and success already. Um, and this work has led to a vision of a really entirely energy aware society that can be translated to public and private spaces and influence the future of our environments. So, accordingly, this research has been supported by the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy, and also the National Academy of Sciences. It has been recognized for its innovation by a TR35. Um, but really, of course, the award that really matters the most is the Viterbi Junior Research Award, which I'm proud to present to Birchin Betrick Gerber. There she is. I have one check left to steal. I can keep trying. Okay, do you remember which award is left now? This, yes, okay, all right, you figured it out. I'm, I'm glad people are awake. There's a lot of blood in the gut now, but still. Um, so last by, but not least by any metric, this researcher has published eight books, 21 book chapters, 118 journal papers, 226 conference papers, and three patents. Um, this faculty member has also trained 34 PhD students, and 12 of whom are in academia, and three are IEEE um, fellows and chaired professors. So the faculty member has received numerous research awards, still none like the one today, um, including the 2016 IEEE Transportation Technologies Award, which is the highest IEEE honor in that field, the JET Medal of Achievement, the, and is, this person is a fellow of the IEEE, IFAC, and JET, 
and Editor-in-Chief of Transactions and Intelligent Transportation Systems. I always think for Editors-in-Chief that it's an honor, but it's just a heck of a lot of work, too. So, but anyway. And of course, this person also received the Presidential Young Investigator Award, but I'm not going to say when, so, because that, you know, it is a senior award. So major contributions to the field of this individual include the entire sort of forming the field of robust adaptive control and literally writing the book on the field by the same name. Also major contributions to intelligent transportation systems and to intelligent freight transportation. And then most recently also to automated vehicle and highway systems, which is a hot and growing topic area. So clearly, for a senior research award, this individual embodies sustained research excellence. Have you figured out who it is? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Well, I won't ask you. In case you say the wrong name, that would be really embarrassing for everybody. <laughs> but kind of fun. Okay, so I'm very proud to present the Viterbi Senior Research Award to Petra Sion. Thank you, and thank you. And now I'm handing it over to Jim Moore, Vice Dean Jim. Will you be funny? Always such a tough act to follow. All right, well, good afternoon. <clears throat> The uh, joint criteria for the Viterbi School of Engineering's 1916 Northrop Grumman Corporation Excellence in Teaching Award and the, dean, the, 19, six, or the 2016 uh, Dean's Award for Innovation in Teaching and Education include, but are not limited to, <coughs> pardon me, quality of classroom teaching, contributions to curriculum development, innovations in pedagogy, demonstrated high personal and professional standards, uh, excellent, excellent teaching evaluations from students, full-time tenured, tenure-track teaching and research faculty members with primary appointments in the USC Viterbi School are eligible for nomination. Uh, the ten nominations the school received were evaluated by a three-person committee that includes uh, previous winners and which is subject to partial rotation um, each year. Uh, I will leave them cloaked in their anonymity, but thank them for their service, and I'll make sure that their, their chairs know about their service. Since Bill was a chair, that's what he did. The 2016 recipient of the Northrop Grumman Excellence in Teaching Award is automatically eligible for nomination by the Viterbi School for the 2017 USC Awards, Associates Award for Excellence in Teaching the highest award the university faculty bestows on its members for outstanding teaching performance. As you know from the Dean's remarks, one of the recipients of the 2016 Associates Award for Excellence in Teaching is the 2014 recipient of the NGC Excellence in Teaching Award, Dean's Professor of Electrical Engineering Systems, Computer Science and Mathematics, Jay Kuo. Let's take another moment to recognize both this achievement and the conscientious efforts of his three-time nominator, Sandy Solchuk. Now, I ask that uh, Frank Flores, Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems Vice President, Engineering Growth and Advancement for the Engineering and Global Product Development Organization, join me at the podium make, and make a few remarks. We all know Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems is a premier provider of manned and autonomous aircraft space systems and advanced technologies critical to our national security. Mr. Flores leads all aspects of EGPD's people initiatives, whose leadership enables the organization to attract higher develop and retain the best talent to fulfill their long-term business requirements. He oversees all aspects of the organization's broad and robust university and STEM relations programs. He's a passionate champion for establishing and sustaining technical relationships with schools and universities to help guide college and high school students into careers in engineering. Mr. Flores is a Trojan. He holds bachelor's and master's of science degrees from the USC Ming Shea Department of Electrical Engineering, where his graduate work focused on communication systems design. 
He's also a graduate of the University of California, San Diego, Executive Program for Scientists and Engineers. He is a Six Sigma Green Belt, and thus I claim him on behalf of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers as a member of my own field, even if so unintentionally. But that's how most people enter my field, is somewhat unintentionally. Um, You'll note, as I was talking to Frank um, before lunch, that he made a somewhat unfortunate apparel choice with respect to his tie. Um, but that's all right. We, we do have a replacement for you, sir. Okay. <laughs> You, uh, you don't have to change at the podium, but you should leave change before you leave the building because you still have to make it to your car. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. But it's hard to believe a Trojan would own a tie like this. And this is what happens when your wife goes out of town and doesn't pick out your tie in the morning. Um, really happy to be here today and be part of this great celebration. You know, Northrop Grumman and University of Southern California have had a uh, you know, great relationship. Uh, it's gone for quite a while. And in fact, I was uh, just looking at a 1956 recruiting film from uh, Northrop Aircraft. And as part of that, Northrop is talking about their great tuition reimbursement program. And who's the film clip? It's the USC Trojans running onto the field in the Rose Bowl. So uh, it's been a great, great relationship. And I, it's so exciting today with all the uh, uh, new initiatives going on, great partnerships. So uh, really happy to be here today. Um, teaching in Excellence. This is uh, an award that we're really very proud to be able to sponsor. You know, you look at the background of our professors and what a great list of awards that uh, Dean Yortzos uh, 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 talked about earlier for, for our great faculty here. There is quite a big uh, workload in our professors and doing great work in, in research and technology. And they never lose sight of their primary purpose, and that's teaching. And um, I know myself that uh, I had uh, a great professors during my undergraduate years that inspired me, in particular, uh, the late uh, Robert uh, Gagliardi. Dr. Gagliardi was my um, undergraduate advisor. But, it really got me passionate about the field of communications. And because of, of his influence, I decided to join TRW and uh, pursue my career in the communications field. And uh, it was just so that having a professor ignite that passion is, uh, is you just can't say enough about that. And that's why we, we'd like to sponsor uh, this, this award. And uh, I think you'll see in this year's uh, recipient, we have that type of individual who ignites that passion in our students. So with that, uh, Jim, do you want to introduce our award winner? I do. Okay, let's start. Please stay here, Frank. Sure. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll, excellent. I'll, I'll read the uh, committee citation, right? Um, the committee reports that the recipient of the Northrop Grumman Excellence in Teaching Award is something of an institution in his home department, having been responsible for developing and teaching for a number of years, a large fraction, some two-thirds, four of six, of the core graduate courses. One might expect in such a case a wizened and hardened instructor, but the student comments were passionate and emphatic. He is described as lighthearted and approachable, passionate, and trust me, that's something of an understatement, and enthusiastic, and most importantly, as a weird professor who loves his job. The committee thinks that his consistent and persistent dedication to teaching and his capacity to communicate and maintain high standards while remaining approachable are signatures of his teaching tenure in the Mork Family Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Science, and that Mohammed Sahimi is the most thoroughly deserving of the Northrop Grumman Corporation Excellence in Teaching Award. Mohammed, please come forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Did you give your congratulations. Check. 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 <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> modest. <Okay. laughs> right. Thanks very much. The uh, support from Northrop Grumman for that award is greatly appreciated and I assure you widely touted. Uh, the, the committee found that the recipient of the Dean's Award for Innovation in Teaching is clearly very instrumental in teaching and developing classes in his unit, particularly in relation to a very popular undergraduate program that originated there and which has since grown to bring considerable recognition to USC. The student comments and scores reflected the contributions of a dedicated teacher and his teaching statement showed careful thought and attention to development and evolution of content within existing classes and in developing new ones. This kind of dedication to continuous improvement makes Information Technology Program senior lecturer Sanjay Madoff an excellent fit for the Dean's Award for Innovation and Teaching. Dean Yortis, the podium is yours. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Jim, and congratulations to all the previous winners. It's now my pleasure to announce two awards for service. This year's Dean's Staff Award for Service goes to Yvette Barnett. Yvette, could you please join me here? For nearly eight years, Yvette has helped make USC Viterbi a stronger school of engineering through her hard work, wonderful attitude, and unstinted dedication. She joined the Department of Biomedical Engineering as a project specialist. Six years later, she has been promoted to business analyst. In between, Yvette served as office manager in the RTH business office. She supports four faculty, helping with everything from grant writing to research accounts to administrative tasks. Her supervisors uniformly describe her as focused, proactive, and dependable, a real joy to work with. Yvette, we at USC Viterbi feel lucky to have you. Thank you for all that you do. This is a little token, and this is something to hang on your wall. Um, we do allow the service winners to say a few words if they want to. Yvette, do you want to say anything? Come in. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Nobody else spoke. Um, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised, but I'm very thankful. Um, it means so much to be honored when you work hard. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks again. This year, I wanted to honor in this ceremony and from this forum an outstanding individual who has served USC Viterbi in multiple capacities over the last several years, in capacities with lasting impact on the school and its mission. This is a special Dean's Award for Service. He has not been awarded before in my tenure as a dean. He was awarded prior to that when Max was the dean. I'm very proud to bestow this special Dean's Award for Service to Asad Madni. A member of the National Academy of Engineering, Asad served as President, Chief Operating Officer, and CTO of BEI Technologies Incorporated 
from 1992 until his retirement in 2006. He led the development and commercialization of intelligent microsensors and systems for aerospace, military, commercial, and transportation industries, including the extremely slow motion, slow motion servo control system for Hubble Space Telescopes and the revolutionary quartz MEMS gyro chip, chip technology used worldwide for electronic stability control in passenger vehicles, saving millions of lives. His many accomplishments in the field have won him widespread international recognition. Assad has received the 2015 IET JJ Thompson Medal, is a 2015 IEEE H Kappa Nu eminent member. He received the 2014 National Academy of Engineering Einstein Society Award, the inaugural 2013 UCLA Electrical Engineering Distinguished Alumnus Award, the 2005 IEEE Achievement Medal, and the 2004 UCLA Engineering Alumnus of the Year Award, higher honor granted by that school, among many others. Of course, the reason we honor Assad here is not his UCLA affiliation, although he did create some hesitation in me giving him that award. <laughs> Fortunately, Assad saw the light earlier and sent his own son here, Jamal, who graduated from UEC Viterbi back a few years ago. Jamal is actually now working for Boeing. I should mention that um, Azad will also receive the 2016 Ellis Island Medal of Honor next month in Ellis Island in New York City, which is a wonderful touching ceremony for people who immigrated to this country. He's here, Azad is here also with his wife, Taj. I like to acknowledge he's uh, uh, with us as well. Asad has been a benefactor of the school by supporting our research mission on multiple occasions. But more importantly, he has served as a member and then past chair of the USC Mingxie Department of Electrical Engineering Advisory Board, where he has helped me immensely with strategy and direction. Following the conclusion of that term, Asad remained a constant supporter of USC Viterbi by steadfastly promoting and championing the school, both nationally and internationally. His impact has been real and substantial. And notwithstanding his brewing past, he is richly deserving the special recognition from USC Viterbi, a recognition I am very pleased to present to him today. Asad. Thank you, Dean Yorchos, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly touched by this recognition. My relationship with the USC Viterbi School began in 2002 when my son Jamal, as the Dean mentioned, joined the Mingxie Department of Electrical Engineering to pursue a Bachelor of Science degree in CECS and a Bachelor of Arts in Mathematics. Those four years that he spent here were not only memorable for him, but were unforgettable for my wife Taj and I, who were both very active and involved parents. Over the course of those years, we were very fortunate to have met certain very remarkable people, including Dr. Max Nikias, the who was then the energetic and dynamic Dean of Engineering and his wife, Nikki. After a few social outings with them, including unforgettable and memorable USC football, I had no doubts that he was going to be the next eminent leader of this wonderful institution. When Max eventually accepted the position of provost and went on to become the president, we were again blessed with an extraordinary leader and a true scholar as the new dean, Dr. Dean Yanis Yortzels, who kept us involved in very meaningful and very fruitful initiatives at USC. My association with the Mingxie Department of Electrical Engineering goes back even further. When my friend George Becky, who had appointed on the Technical Advisory Board of my company, BEI Technologies, introduced me to Professor Raghu Raghavendra, who in those days was the chair of the EE Systems Department of the Electrical Engineering uh, Group. Uh, Professor Raghu, after his first meeting with me, um, invited me to join the newly forming 
uh, Industrial Advisory Board and uh, serve as its chair. Based on his sincerity of invitation and the compelling reasons that he gave me, it was very difficult for me to say no and I enthusiastically uh, agreed to serve. Little did I realize then that accepting this commitment as chair of the Industrial Advisory Board would be a decade-long commitment which would provide me with a great sense of satisfaction on a personal, professional, and technical basis. I was fortunate to work with the Dean and several other faculty members in furthering our engineering curriculum, defining our ongoing and future research activities, preparing for ABET accreditation, and even until now, working on nominating our outstanding faculty for various honors and awards in professional societies and mentoring our younger faculty. I was also blessed in terms of research involvement with this wonderful department. After giving two lectures on the technologies that my company was pursuing in the area of MEMS, and after enjoying both those lectures myself and the interaction that I had with the people, I was surprised that before I reached home, I had a whole list of requests of different equipment that different groups wanted. Uh, and while initially it was overwhelming, I found a way to get the appropriate sophisticated sensors and instrumentations in the hands of various groups for remarkable projects that were going on at the Information Sciences Institute, Myers Robotics Center, and uh, several other research groups. However, the most important research that I funded and personally participated in was with Professor E.S. Kim's MEMS group, where we developed and innovated some very unique approaches to MEMS-based silicon accelerometers and gyroscopes, which resulted in numerous publications, patent, PhD students, and established the Mingxie Department of Electrical Engineering as a formidable force in this emerging area. Over the course of the last 14 years, I have been privileged to work with other outstanding faculty as well. Some of them are present here, and these include Professor Saul Gulam, Professor Sandy Sachuk, Professor Sri Narayanan, Professor Sanjit Mitra, Professor Dan Dapkus, Professor Maya Matarik, Professor Alan Wilner, and the late John Choma, and several others. Last but not the least, my wife and Taj and I have both been blessed with the friendship of an extraordinary individual, the benefactor and the namesake of our electrical engineering department, Ming Shei and his lovely wife, Eva. Ming's visionary leadership, his philanthropy, his compassion, his care and concern for students, faculty, and staff, and his extraordinary creative talents, for which he was recognized by the United States National Academy of Engineering by being elected as an extraordinary leader. I would also like to, at this point, once again, congratulate another great individual sitting here, a good friend and a dear colleague. Alan Wilner, who's the latest inductee to the National Academy of Engineering. And for those that have an opportunity, I would urge you to attend his induction this September in Washington, DC. I look forward to many more years of productive, inspiring, and creative activities with the USC. And at this point, I would like to say that I would really wish to express my gratitude to Professor, or rather Dean Yorsos, Ming Shea, President Nikias and Professor and Vice Dean Raghu for making my experience with USC a memorable experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I accept this honor with the greatest enthusiasm and the utmost humility that is exceeded only by my deepest gratitude. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asad. This conclude, concludes our program today. Before I go, I wanted to thank Jennifer Alvarado. Where's Jennifer? <laughs> Je Jennifer, come over here. You gotta come over here, Jennifer, come on. <laughs> Jennifer organized today's event with her unparalleled skill. Jennifer, this may be her last such event to organize because she plans to actually relocate to Texas sometime soon. Jennifer, say it isn't so. Can you please? 
Thank you. So thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank Congratulations you. for everything that you've done. Thank you very much. And one final, I think, event perhaps also is uh, uh, related to Mary, Mary Lee Reynolds. Mary Lee, are you here? Mary Lee is also retiring at the end of the year, and I think that will be her last event attending here. Mary Lee, could you please stand up to be recognized by everyone? So on this sort of a sad note, we are ending our program. Thank you for coming, and look forward to the commencement and another exciting year next year. Thank you.